Hi, it's Mary Beth Shaw, Stencil Girl Products. I'm here for the fourth stencil school, and we are going to explore stencils and watercolor today. I'm going to show you four ways, four ways you can use watercolor with your stencils. So we've got a lot to do. Let's get going. All right. So right here, I've got four different stencils and I got my watercolors. Now this one, I've already, I took this stencil and I taped it to a piece of smooth watercolor paper. And then I took this little brush and I got some black gesso and I just went gently around over top of the stencil with the black gesso and I'm waiting for it to dry. So that is one of the ways we're going to use this. Another way is this is a piece of watercolor paper that is hot pressed. If you've used watercolor paper before, you perhaps know what I mean by hot press. It's um, smooth. It doesn't have any of the texture that um, cold press watercolor paper has. And this can be quite nice. I like hot press for my journals and for other things, and I just enjoy it quite a bit. So what I'm going to do first is wet it. Boy, my spray bottle is on its last leg, I think. What do you think? You think I should get a new spray bottle? Oh, good Lord. All right, so I wet it, and I sat the stencil down on top of it. And the water sort of holds the stencil in, in place a little bit, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bunch of watercolor paint on this wet area and I'm going to let it dry and then we'll, re we'll, um, we'll remove the stencil after it's already dry. So you can do this either way. You can put the watercolor down first, or you can put the watercolor down on top of the stencil like I'm doing. Um, I've had success with both avenues, quite frankly. I like to mix up the colors. So I'm using, I'm going to jump in with some yellow here. I'm using Golden Core watercolors. Core is... Um, a brand made by Golden and I like them a lot. They've been kind of my go-to watercolor for many years and um, I just love them. Now, here's the thing about when you're doing this, you don't really have to worry if you're going over, under the lines or whatever. It's gonna be a super loosey-goosey rendering of the stencil and I like that, I really do. So I'm gonna put some green over these leaves. When you're done, this could be the type of thing you might wanna fussy cut out, or you might wanna con you know, continue working on it. You just never know. So it's a um, lot of options here, a lot of options. I am... Um, that first pink I put down was actually an opera pink. This this particular set of goldens that I'm using, it had, it came with these extra, that bottom row was empty. So it came with empty little places and you got to fill up some of your own colors down there, which I have to say, yeah, I like that. I um, obviously love the ones it came with. And then to have these, um, others that you could fill in well that's pretty sweet too so all right I'm using a lot of water a lot of watercolor but we are good to go there we are it's wet I'm going to set it aside and let it do its thing all right next I have um what was I going to show you with these? I know one thing I was going to show you. This is a stencil of mine. And I was going to quickly show you how, if you're doing watercolor, 
you could use a pencil or a permanent marker like this. This is a very thin permanent marker. It's a Unipen 0.5. So if you're going to use this, you just go along and trace inside the little stencil parts. You obviously don't want to do this on a super, super delicate stencil because that would be somewhat crazy. But on um, one like this where you can, you know, easily trace within the parts, you can do that. I'm not going to bore you with this whole thing, but I am going to show you how you could get started here. And like I said, you could use pencil too. Either way is going to be fine. So we'll go ahead and take that stem down. All right, so here is a little bit of that done. Now let me um, let me grab a smaller brush here. Here's one. Um, because I just don't think I want to use a huge brush for this. And then you basically use it like a um, like a coloring book for watercolor, okay? You can just go in. And I get a little water on my brush, a little of the watercolor paint, but I don't go crazy. I just rather, I'm rather tidy. This is the hardest one for me because, you know, tidy is not exactly my thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I try, but mm, not so good at being tidy. Okay, so you can just go in and use it like it's um you know a coloring book and that is certainly a great way to use watercolor with stencils i think you've got the idea right there don't you yep all right i'm not going to finish that one up what i am going to do is use the bottom half of this stencil and I'm going to kind of do the opposite of what we did on this one. We painted that. And instead of um, doing that, it's getting really drippy. It's dripping everywhere. I probably shouldn't have done that last squirt of water. But yeah, I can't help myself. <laughs> but what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to put the watercolor down first and then put this down. Okay. So let's... Um, I'm going to get a big mop brush and I'm just going to wet this area. Okay. Wet. Now I'm going to get some other colors. I can't decide what colors I want. That's what I'm, <laughs> I'm struggling with. <laughs> Goodness gracious, right? <laughs> I love watching it bleed out like that. That's one of my favorite things. Look how that yellow makes it move. It's so fun, right? This is about the easiest technique you're going to find. I mean, seriously, easy peasy technique. Let's just add a little bit of magenta in there because we can, right? Okay, and so then I'm going to just put this one on top of it, right like that, okay? And that's all you do for that technique. And this needs to set aside also, okay? Now the last technique is running out of dust space here. The last technique I wanted to show you is this one where I gessoed it. So I'm going to take the stencil off. I have done this technique like um, for greeting cards before. It's really nice and really pretty to use for a greeting card. And okay, so there it is. I've got all that black on there, the black gesso. And if we look at it, we can tell that it's supposed to be big leaf structures. So I'm going to pick up some green. And again, this is going to be kind of like a little coloring page of sorts. You can leave some whites. You can add some yellows. You could even add some little blues in there, or that's a darker green. But you can see how pretty this is going to be when you paint around it with your watercolor. 
you don't have to be super precise with this. I mean, you could just completely go overboard, but I've already mentioned I'm not tidy. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, so I'm not super tidy and I just like to get it all out there. Now, let me show you one thing. Like, look how much water is sitting right there in that part. Grab a little piece of paper towel and get the corner and put it down there and it'll just suck up that excess that you've got going on there if you get you know a little bit overboard like i almost always do okay so there we go so this is going to be a really pretty effect if you paint out this whole thing it's going to be just lovely so i'm going to let these others dry and then i will come on back and show you what we have Okay, I'm back and I believe we are about ready here. So I finished painting this little guy and what I did was I also went back into the middle and put some, some colors in there. This is the thing, if you're using the stencil as a guide for coloring or painting, you can adapt it any which way you want. And um, I, that's a whole nother video that I'm gonna have to show you sometime, but you can even combine stencils and do a bunch of different things with them. As far as what we've been discussing regarding beginner stencils and stencils for more experienced users, this is a great stencil for any level of stencil user. It's very, firm it has great bridges it's not going to flop around and do anything strange you know it's gonna be a great stencil for any level so that's a good one this next one the one that i just said also a great stencil for any level and what's nice about it is it also results in such complexity i mean look at how cool that looks especially when you put the black gesso on first I think this is a really superior technique for some of our beginner stencil users who want to wow people with their work. Put down the black gesso and then paint in with watercolor or you could color with colored pencils or whatever it is you wanted to do, but great, great stencil design. Okay, now this one is drying so light, I'm a little worried about it, but oh, it did come up. Okay. So you remember that this is the one where we just put a big swath, swath of watercolor and then slap the stencil down. And this is the one where we wet it, laid the stencil down and then painted over it. So you can see that you get, I'm gonna bring this right up to the camera, totally different effects. I like this effect. I put some extra paint on there and darkened it up. Maybe I should have done the same with this, but I like this effect too. So they're both wonderful effects. We've got four different ways here that you can use stencils with watercolor. And I think that all four of these techniques are suitable for pretty much any stencil user. This stencil here is probably the most advanced just because it is delicate and it's floppy and it's one you really need to be mindful with. However, when you're doing a technique like this and we're just throwing it down, anybody can have success with this one, right? And the same with this one. It's gonna be great for any level stencil user. I hope that these watercolor techniques have been fun for you today. I really, you know, truly, when I started with stencils, I didn't imagine that we would be using them with watercolor. I did not. I just thought watercolor was way too watery to work with stencils. And when I came across these techniques and started playing on my own, it changed everything for me. It really did. So now, like this technique or um, this technique, if I can get this under the camera here, gosh, oh no, I can't because I've got the camera the wrong way. Okay, these techniques. <laughs> anyway, you can use those on vintage ledger pages. You know how sometimes you'll get a ledger page that has, it feels like there's almost a sheen to it or something. And then other ones are super porous. You want the page that has like a little sheen to it. 
oh my goodness, watercolor and stencils is really stellar on those types of pages. So I can't wait to hear about what everybody does. I think that watercolor and stencils are a perfect match. Thank you so much for watching Stencil School number four.